I'm going to be moving on to question number six now. Learners, question number six is the circles in analytical geometry. I find my students also battling with it, also struggling with circles. We used to working with circles at the center. I just want to, before we go to the question, let me just show you something quickly. A circle's equation at the center is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. This is if your center is at the origin. But if your center is not at the origin, your formula is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. This is away from the origin. Okay, so that's your two formulas that we need now. And then also let me show you something. I'm going to use a little diagram here. What do I still need to remember? If I draw that, that's my axis system. This is my y axis. This is my x axis. Here's my circle. If I draw a tangent, what is a tangent now again? A tangent is a line that cuts the circle at one position. There's my tangent. Very, very important. What am I drawing in now? Answer that question quickly while I draw it in. If I get the circle here, this is the center here, and I draw in, what is that? That is called the radius. A line from the center of the circle to the circumference is a radius. That is a tangent. What must I remember? That the tangent is perpendicular to a radius. A tangent and a radius is perpendicular to one another. I drew in the tangent, I drew in the radius. Let's just quickly look. Circle at origin, circle away from origin. There's my tangent, there's my radius, and they are perpendicular. You need to remember that we don't do geometry, not all of us do paper three. So we need to remember that a tangent and a radius is perpendicular to one another. Okay, so that is what we need for question six. And I have question number six here with me. And this is what it looked like. Now let me tell you something. After this paper was written last year, when I saw the paper after this, my students wrote, and I looked at the sketch, I thought, oh my goodness, this is difficult. I wonder if the pupils coped with it. But then afterwards, after I spoke to them, they said, ma'am, we took it slowly, question by question. Don't look at the sketch. And you become so scared of the question, then you say, oh, let's go to the next question. You don't leave any blank spaces in an exam. You try your absolute best. This is a circle. Yes, the sketch looks difficult. There are two tangents. There's a small circle. There's a diameter. Take it step by step. So first of all, let's go to the sketch. Okay, so I've got my sketch here. Let's focus on the sketch quickly. There's my sketch. Okay, I've got the sketch here. Everybody, I hope you can see it clearly. Let's start to read. I want to ask you, when you look at the sketch, do you also get scared? Do you also think I can't do it? Of course you can do it, everybody. Let's give this question a good go. The line LP with equation y plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. That is is the equation of line LP. I'm just going to move this here. There we go. So that you can see everything what I'm writing and you can see the sketch. Everybody, what did I say? Take a deep breath and just settle. Concentrate. What I want you to do is to put this equation in standard form immediately. Y is equal to minus X plus 2. Standard form. What is my gradient? My gradient is equal to negative 1. And C is equal to 2. This is the equation of line LP that was given to you. Before you even went further by looking at the questions, grade 12, what did you do? You put it in standard form. Standard form. Getting Y alone. What is your gradient? Negative 1. And they say that LP is a tangent to L. At L to the circle with center minus 4 and 4. Huh, the circle is not centered at the origin. It is centered at negative 4 and 4. 
So you know already, it's the second formula that I wrote down, x minus a squared plus x y minus b squared. And then it says that ln is a diameter. Just looking at all the information that they give me, then they said this line. This line in Q is parallel to LP. Immediately, you know what? You know that the gradient of in Q is equal to negative 1 as well. Why is the gradient of in Q equal to the gradient of LP? Because the lines are parallel. Parallel lines have the same gradient. Perpendicular lines, you flip them. You take the reciprocal. And you change the sign. But we've got parallel lines here. And now we go to the first question. Determine the equation of the diameter ln. Determine the equation of the diameter ln. Okay. Determine the equation of diameter ln. Oh, immediately. Oh my goodness. You draw in your 90 degrees. I get so excited when I see a radius and a tangent because a radius and a tangent is perpendicular to one another. And if they're perpendicular, then you know you have to swap the gradients. Do you know what you have already? You already have the gradient of ln. Your diameter, remember your diameter is ln. You already have the gradient of ln. What is the gradient of ln? It is 1. Remember, they perpendicular now, so you need to reciprocate. But if you reciprocate one, it's still one, and you have to change the sign. That was a minus, so now this one is a plus. Look how easy this is. You now have the gradient already, so y is equal to 1x plus c. You can tell me what to do here. You're going to substitute a point, not just any point. It must be a point on the diameter. It must be a point on ln. So what point do you see? Negative 4 and 4. So I'm going to substitute that in there. It's 4, 1, x becomes negative 4. There's your c. c is equal to take the negative 4 across. It becomes plus 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. What is the equation of line? Ln, ln is my diameter, y is equal to 1x plus 8. Look at that. Simple, not difficult, just what did you have to know? You had to know that this tangent is perpendicular, the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. You had the gradient of Lp. And now you just knew that the gradient of ln is the reciprocal. The next question, 6.2, asks me to find the coordinates of L. To find the coordinates of L. Right. What happens at L? To find the coordinates of L, what happens at L? My line LP and ln, they touch. They touch LN, touches LP. So this is a simultaneous equation. This is a simultaneous equation. So I have my two equations. The one was x plus 8 is equal to, the other one is y equal to negative x plus 2. There we go. What did I do, students? I put my equations equal to each other. Why did I put them equal to each other? Because the lines cut there. Can we see if we can solve for x? Bring the negative across. Negative x across gives me 2x. Then I take my 8 across. I get negative 6. x is equal to negative 3. What are we busy doing? Just let us see what is, our, what is our objective. Remember, we must have goals. We're trying to find the coordinates of L. Trying to find the coordinates of L, these two lines cut. I put the equations equal to each other. X is equal to negative 3. To find Y, you can take the negative 3, you can substitute it into that equation. Or you can take the negative 3 and substitute it into that equation. I'm sure that you can see you get the same answer. I'm going to, I don't like working with negatives. So Y is equal to X plus 8. Put the negative 3 into the place of x. y is equal to 5. The coordinates of L 
x is negative 3 and y is 5. That's the coordinates of L, which is negative 3 and 5. Our next question asks us to find the equation of the circle. Remember, we started by saying this equation is not centered at the origin. It's not at 0, 0. It's centered away from the origin. So you immediately write down your formula, which says x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. Why am I writing down this equation? Away from the center. A is the x coordinate of the center and b is the y coordinate of the center. So can we substitute that in? What is the x coordinate of the center now again? Negative 4. So that's already a negative. So it becomes a plus 4. And the y coordinate of the center is 4. Everybody, you're only looking for r. In order to find r, we need to substitute a point on the circle. We need to substitute a point on the circle. You tell me. We just worked out L. We just found out what was the coordinates of L. What was the coordinates of L now again? Negative 3 and 5. We work that out. So the negative 3 goes into the place of X. And the 5 goes into the place of Y. What do you see? Your only variable that you have left is r. Negative 3 plus 4 gives me 1 squared is 1. Another one, r squared is equal to 2. Equation of the circle, x plus 4 squared plus y minus 4 squared is equal to what is r squared? 2. Here is your equation of your circle. Very simple everybody. I hope you understand that, how to find the equation of the circle. Then the last question that I'm going to look at there is just how to find this point here, how to find n. The last question, guys I just want to show you something interesting. Look m is minus 4 and 4. Here you have l which is negative 3 and 5. And the last one you have here, you're looking for n. But what do you know? What do you know? This is in the middle. This point is in the middle. So now you can just count. Remember what's the question? Find the coordinates of L. This is in the middle. Just count. From minus 4 to minus 3, Oh my goodness, I moved one coordinate up. So this must be minus 5. In there is minus 5. And here I move from 4 to 5. And here I have to move from 3 to 4. Look how nice this works out. Minus 5 to 4, 1 unit. Minus 4 to minus 3, 1 unit. 3 to 4, 1 unit. And 4 to 5, 1 unit. There we go. And that is the circle. I think that everybody feels quite confident about the circle. I don't think that you must stress about circles. Very important, away from the center, centered at the origin, and then you have a tangent is perpendicular to a radius.